Hi, this is Pastor Tony Sobosinski, and, and we're continuing a study of the book of Joel uh, for the time of Lent uh, as we a- approach our acknowledgement that Jesus died on the cross on, on that Good Friday and rose from the dead on Easter. And we've looked at the first chapter, and we've looked at the second chapter, too, and it's a very important section uh, because uh, it, it, it's it's uh, fulfilled in the New Testament. Uh, last week, we looked at part of that chapter that said, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. And you can go back and you can see uh, what the Bible says about the name of the Lord and the name of Jesus. But this uh, uh, time, uh, we're, we're going to uh, continue and look at the day of Pentecost more. Uh, Joel 2 is quoted in Acts chapter 2. And in verse 32 it says, It shall come to pass that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. For in Mount Zion and Jerusalem there shall be those who escape, as the Lord has said, and among the survivors shall be those whom the Lord calls. And we'll look at that last sentence combined with uh, Joel chapter 3 more. Uh, but for right now, we're going to look at the day of Pentecost and how they came about. Joel prophesied, it will come about after this. So that that gives you a the yellow after this uh, gives you a, a stage in time that we're changing time periods now. Now we're going to the time of Jesus from the time of Joel, and which encompasses the last days. We're in the last days right now. It will come about after this that I will pour out my spirit on all mankind, and your sons and your daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. And even on the male and female servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. So a tremendous blessing that is going to come out in in the days that Joel is prophesying about right here. And we'll talk about the Holy Spirit, and we'll talk about somewhat, uh, we'll touch on what prophecy is, speaking forth inspired by the Holy Spirit in whatever way he chooses to speak through us. So after the resurrection, Jesus died on the cross, he rose from the dead, and for 40 days, uh, we would almost say now, he gave seminars speaking about the kingdom of God and all that that means. And of course, when we think of the kingdom, we think of a king, and that's Jesus. Uh, the king of all creation is God the Father. And his kingdom is, is uh, his realm and his rule. There's a sense that the kingdom is established in your heart and mine when we make him Lord. In other words, we say, you are my Lord, you are my king, you are my savior. And we submit ourselves to his rule, and we become part of not only his kingdom, but actually part of his family. So it's interesting that for 40 days after he rose from the dead, he appeared in the flesh, uh, in his body, speaking about the kingdom of God. That's a lot of teaching. And while staying with them, he ordered them not to depart from Jerusalem. He said, stay here in Jerusalem, don't leave but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, You heard from me, for John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. I still remember when I was in Asbury Seminary, and and uh, the professor was going around the class and giving just different topics about uh, uh, we were supposed to spontaneously start speaking on. Uh, and uh, the professor asked me, and it was just a gift, to start speaking about the Holy Spirit. And I remember how excited I was to be able to share the, this importance of the experience of knowing God by the Holy Spirit and his love being poured out into our hearts through him. Acts chapter 1 continues, say, So when they had come together, they asked him, Lord, will you at this time restore the kingdom to Israel? So remember, Jesus, for 40 days, was speaking about the kingdom of God, all the teachings. So now they ask for timing. Are you going to restore the kingdom to Israel? When will you do this? And he said to them, it's not for you to know times or seasons 
that's not important to you to know when that the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the very end of the earth. And the important thing here is he equips us uh, with the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to speak forth these words of life, the gospel of Jesus Christ, to give our story and to tell people how they can be saved. And he gives us words that have powerful effect so that others can come to be part of this kingdom. Now I'm switching to God's word translation here in Acts chapter 2. It's a little simpler translation. It says, When Pentecost, the 15th day after Passover came, 50th I mean, all the believers were together in one place. And suddenly a sound like a violently blowing wind came from the sky and filled the whole house where they were staying. And tongues that looked like fire appeared to them. The tongues arranged themselves so that one came to rest on each believer. And all the believers were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them the ability to speak. So this ability, this power was given by the Holy Spirit, speaking through them. It's interesting, if you study prophecy, especially in the Old Testament, uh, it equates to praise sometimes, uh, but it's always empowered by the Holy Spirit. Uh, I can't remember if it was Joel or another uh, chapter. One of the videos we did talk about the company or the school of the prophets and how there were gatherings when uh, Elijah and Elisha were alive. But now this is a gift for all believers, not just special people. And what was happening there in Jerusalem was devout Jewish men from every nation. In other words, true believers would come in and they would make their pilgrimage, we call it, a trip to Jerusalem from wherever they were living, whatever nation. And... Uh, so the Jew, the Jewish men from every nation were living in Jerusalem, and they gathered when they heard the wind. And each person was startled to recognize his own dialect when the disciples spoke. And this is fascinating because we it's like the United Nations. You, when the United Nations gather together, there's people from Japan, China, and so many different languages from around the world. And they have to have like headphones on with a translator to understand what's being said. But watch what happens here. So stunned and amazed, the people in the crowd said, All of these men who are speaking are Galileans. Why do we hear them speaking in our own native dialects? We're Parth Parthians, Medes, and Elamites. We're people from Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus the province of Asia, Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt, and the country near Cyrene and Libya, where Jewish people, converts to Judaism, and visitors from Rome, Crete, and Arabia. In other words, from all these nations, all these places that had different languages. And we hear these men in our own languages as they tell about the miracles that God has get done. So remember, Jesus promised that they would be given power from God, the Holy Spirit, to be able to speak forth and be witnesses. And as they proclaim the, the message of Jesus, even though these people only understand mostly their own languages, each one hears them in their own language by a miracle of God. All of these devout men were stunned and puzzled, and they asked each other, what can this mean? And others said jokingly, they're drunk on sweet wine. Now this takes us back and reminds us, for those of us who have, have read through the Bible, in Genesis chapter 11, and what happened there was there, let's put it this way, there was a rebellion against God. And uh, God saw this, and he said, let, come, let us go down and there confused their language. They all spoke, they could communicate together clearly so that they may not understand one another's speech. So this is a curse coming. All these different languages, people couldn't communicate anymore except with their own people, their own nation. 
So the Lord dispersed them from there over the face of all the earth, and they left that off building the city. And that's what they were doing uh, in rebellion against God. The name of this city was Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there, the Lord dispersed them over the face of all the earth. So that was a punishment. That was a curse. But here in Pentecost, we have the curse reversed. Now they can understand the words of God through the apostles miraculously. And again, others said jokingly, they're drunk. And Peter stood up with the eleven apostles in a loud voice. He said to them, these men are not drunk. This is what the prophet Joel spoke about. So we're back to the book of Joel. Day of Pentecost. Peter is quoting this chapter. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on everyone. Your sons and daughters will speak what God has revealed. And I, uh, I'm i using the God's Word translation. It simplifies it down. It, In other versions, and in Greek, it talks about prophesying. But remember, this is God-inspired speech, whether it's in the language that people can understand or if it's praise or not. It, it Whatever kind of speech, a tongue is just a language, uh, and God inspires the tongues, if you will, of, of his people to speak forth. Peter continues to quote from Joel, Your young men will see visions, your old men will dream dreams. In those days I will pour out my spirit on my servants, both men and women, and they will speak what God has revealed. In other words, they will prophesy. Now, I want to just touch, and I know this could be very confusing. I've, I, I have given, and maybe I need to do it again, a whole message on, on the gift of tongues and prophecy, from, especially from 1 Corinthians 12 and 1 Corinthians 14. 1 Corinthians 13 is the love chapter. It's like a sandwich, I, I call it. you got 1 Corinthians 12 that talks about spiritual gifts, and then 1 Corinthians 14 is the other side of the sandwich, and that's specifically speaking about two gifts, prophecy and the gift, the prayer language of tongues. In between is the, the primacy of love. And in 14, the Apostle Paul is arguing that if you are loving, you'll care more about other people than yourselves. So you'll desire more to prophesy than you will any other gift. And here's the reason why. He says, pursue love. Remember 1 Corinthians 13 is a love chapter. And earnestly desire the spiritual gifts. This is for believers, people who have received the Holy Spirit at this point. But they are still to continue to desire the spiritual gifts. And so are you. And so am I. Especially that you may prophesy. So he puts this at the top of the list. For one who speaks in a tongue, and this is a Different story. We're not going to go in deeply, but speaks not to men, but to God. This use of these languages is a prayer language because it's to God. It's not for speaking to other men like it was in the book of Acts. This is speaking to God. For no one understands him. In other words, in the book of Acts, they understood every word he was saying in different languages, their own languages. Here, no one understands the person speaking in this language. But he utters mystery in the Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is really working here. No time to focus on that now, but here's where I want to go. And on the other hand, the one who prophesies speaks to people for their upbuilding. So this is a, a loving thing to do because it has a loving effect, not in just ourselves, but on others. And when God inspires our speech to go forth inspired by him to people they're it's for their upbuilding they're built up in their faith for encouragement they're, they they get stronger because of this and consolation they're comforted and receive peace and, and love and grace from god so this is all of these things i believe are are because you look into the old testament combine it together and also what joel says all these together are inspired speech, tongues, languages of God 
This one is the language of the people, so they can understand, they can be built up. The other is privately be seeing something between a person, a believer, and God. But it doesn't help anyone but themselves. It's not wrong. It's just the other ones more loving to other people. John chapter 16, Jesus talked about the gift of the Holy Spirit. And if you will, I don't know if it's a proper word to say, but he's excited about this. If you can think of a better uh, word for that, let, let me know. But he says this, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I'm leaving. He's talking about going to the cross and dying and eventually ascending into heaven. He says, for if I do not leave, the helper, he's speaking here of the Holy Spirit, will not come to you. But if I go, if Jesus goes to the cross, is risen from the dead, and ascended to heaven, then he says, I will send him to you. And he, when he comes, will convict the world regarding sin and righteousness and judgment. And it's really worthwhile to continue reading in John chapter 16. But in other words, the Holy Spirit will be there with us to be affecting the heart of people so that they take seriously the message from Christ. Jesus says, I have many more things to say to you, but you cannot bear them at the present time. In other words, m there are more things that Jesus wants to communicate even after he has died and he has risen from the dead and ascended into heaven. But when he, the Spirit of Truth, and that's one of the, the names of the Holy Spirit, he's the Spirit of Truth, there are no lies in him. There's nothing fake about him whatsoever. It's always truth. When he, the Spirit of Truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He'll help you understand the Bible, in other words, and everything God wants to say to you. For he will not speak on his own, but whatever he hears. Very similar to what Jesus talked about when he said the Father speaks to him and he he delivers what he hears from the father so the holy spirit does what he hears from the father and the son he will speak and he will disclose to you what is to come so there will be future events that the holy spirit will uh, tell believers about warn them or, or encourage them by it but prophecy includes looking into the future and Jesus, he will glorify me. If you ever find someone speaking about the Holy Spirit in such a way that it makes Jesus look undesirable. I mean, I have heard people say, well, you've only, uh, you only know Jesus. Uh, you're only part way there because you need the gift of the Holy Spirit. The whole purpose of God, the Holy Spirit, is he glorifies Jesus. He doesn't reduce him and make what Jesus did on the cross look like it's minimal and like forgiveness is something that's small. On the contrary, he glorifies Jesus. So if someone is not glorifying Jesus, they are not full of the Holy Spirit, at least at that time. And Jesus goes on to say, for he will take from mine and will disclose it to you. He's a messenger for Jesus. All things that the Father has are mine. This is why I said that he takes from mine and will disclose it to you. In uh, the small catechism written by Martin Luther, it's a wonderful book to own. Here is a, a, an explanation of part of the creed. I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ my Lord or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified and kept me in the true faith. In the same way, he calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. The Lutheran Service book is our most recent edition of the worship hymnal. For the church, which includes prayers in it, too. And one of them, the prayers goes like this. Heavenly Father, send your Holy Spirit into our hearts. So you can pray still. 
It doesn't mean that you are not a believer or you're not saved. But we should be praying continuously that we would ask God the Father to send his Holy Spirit into our hearts to direct and rule us according to your will, to comfort us in all our afflictions, to defend us from all error, and lead us into all truth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. That's a beautiful uh, prayer. The Lutheran Witness is the name of uh, a magazine that our uh, denomination puts out. And Dr. Gerhard Bode uh, wrote this in The Lutheran Witness. The Holy Spirit's activity is creative and powerful. His working in this way has a history. In the Old Testament, the Spirit was present at the creation of the world, hovering over the face of the waters. The Spirit came in power upon Israel's judges and kings, equipping and strengthening them to accomplish great feats and victories for God and his people. By the Spirit, the prophets became mouthpieces for the Lord, proclaiming both judgment and deliverance. Dr. Bode goes on to say, In the New Testament, the Holy Spirit came upon Christ himself, descending upon him in the form of a dove at his baptism. On the evening before his crucifixion, Jesus promised his disciples that they would receive the paraclete, and that's from the Greek word, the one who walks beside us, the, the spirit of truth. This comforter and helper would live with them and be in them forever. On Pentecost, that we already spoke of there in the book of Acts chapter 2, where Joel chapter 2 was partially fulfilled, the apostles were human instruments of the Holy Spirit. Ordinary people became extraordinary witnesses, courageous proclaimers of the gospel. Under the Spirit's guidance, flawed instruments all now announced the great saving work of God in Jesus Christ. Martin Luther wrote, the words to several of the hymns in our hymnal, but hymn 497, he wrote this. It's a prayer. Come, Holy Ghost, God and Lord, with all your graces now outpoured on each believer's mind and heart, your fervent love to them impart. And we can personalize this for ourselves. Come, Holy Spirit, God and Lord, with all your grace is now outpoured on my mind and heart. Your fervent love to me impart. Hymn 496 we'll use as a closing prayer. Holy Spirit, all divine, dwell within this heart of mine. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.